I guess he been in the spaces with the fans and the fans been getting on his ass like, man, the pod trash, bro. Like, well, what's going on? You out here manipulating the fans. You out here being too political. You not speaking on certain topics. You got certain relationships. This ain't the Joe Button that we were fans of. When you were saying, fuck the industry, fuck the execs. I'm here for the art. Like, I'm here for the essence of it. Then you get in the pod lane. You start touching these millions and rubbing shoulders with dudes you couldn't rub shoulders with when you were the disgruntled rapper and you start turning into the exact niggas you used to be dissing. You doing a lot of the same shit. So they like, what, like, what's up, bro? Like the pod ain't it. And he just went crazy on them. So give me your I, take. I've been listening. I've been listening to Joe Blanc since shit. I was 2015, something like that, 2014. And the, the podcast, what I'll say right now, the quality is great. However, the content is became terrible it's low-key unbearable right now and i don't know if it's because i've been watching bro for so long or it's because they're really not in their bag it's too much political shit with no fact checking no knowledge it's too much of the um getting into melissa Ford's love life and mm -hmm. what she got going on every every time they come on the show they getting on her who you dating what you doing niggas don't want to hear that shit you feel me uh, and then on top of that niggas spent two months on drake they still talking about drake to this day like and if you're a core fan which most of their fans and listeners are we don't want to hear about that shit two months later we still hearing about it so i think right now they need to take a little break it's hot outside maybe go get on a yacht get some you know some sun on your skin and come back rejuvenated because right now it's not where it used to be when people uh when it was rory and mall i feel like a lot of people really fucked with the show and then after that it became a little bit i don't want to say unbearable because i i enjoy most of the, the characters on the cast at this point but i think the camaraderie has became more business-like instead of an actual personal relationship and you can see it on the camera and then it translates i just think they missing some youth on there maybe it's a bunch That's of cool. old niggas stuck in their ways and you're getting a bunch of old nigga take which that could be cool but when you're dealing with hip-hop you're dealing with all age brackets so I don't know, man, because I came up listening to Joe Budden, but niggas was like, oh, to pump it up, nigga. Like, I was in high school bumping the move, move music mixtapes. Yeah. Like, I used to knock that shit. Like, I still to this day, nigga, literally yesterday, I was just playing Move Music 3 on the way back from the studio with Lil Bro. So I still am a fan of his music. The nigga he turned into on the podcast with the success, I'm not a fan of that. Because like I said, he always was the radical. So I always saw a lot of myself in him from that aspect like man fuck the machine you feel me i'm here for the art i'm not here to to, to mold and and sell out for the music and the record sales like even if it's at a detriment to my own career because he was damn near a mixtape rapper his whole career besides pump it up so mm -hmm. once he hit the success of the joe button podcast i seen him start to change like that money that fame that success which he always wanted as a rapper he's mm -hmm. getting now in the podcast lane and now he sees why them niggas was the way they was yeah. in the rap lane back then when he didn't understand. Like, oh, fuck, yeah. you're not talking about woo woo. And niggas like, man, I got relationship with these niggas. We exactly. make money together. I can't just be out here saying whatever like you. That's what got you punched in the face by Raekwon. That's what almost got you punched in the face by Method Man. This is what got ran Ransom at your homie uh, front door on Vlad TV smacking the shit out your mans. He didn't understand okay. back then. Now he touching that money, rubbing shoulder with them Jewish folks. He like he won't even touch on certain topics and and that's what people loved him for because out of everybody he was the one who would say what everybody was scared to say which now he won't even talk about certain shit. like i'm said, just, fuck you niggas. no nah, he, he he really it, it, you know it started when he went on state of the culture he had a show with brandon jinx scotty uh and it was on revolt which was uh, is diddy's uh was his shit at the time and i think that's when the relationships and the, and the bias started because that was one of the first things that I seen people really get on him about was cutting the whole Diddy, you know, debacle thing out of his show multiple times, not speaking on him, not speaking on Jay. I mean, you go on the show sometimes and again, they having conversations about shit that nobody knows nothing about. Some inside jokes. And this is for. It's a three hour podcast. So if I turn on the show and it's an hour of y'all talking about the weekend with each other in subliminals, y'all got bleeps coming because we can't know the person's name. They cut names out shit. What are we watching for? Niggas is not going to stay tuned in for an hour straight and not get to no topics. Our intro is crazy. So he became, <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Like an hour intro, intro is nuts. It's just nuts. And then he's became so accustomed to just doing whatever. I think he's letting the, the fame and the spaces and shit like that go to his head 
where he doesn't give a fuck. He literally said, hey, fuck you niggas pretty much. Like, you know what I mean? Even though you niggas to a certain degree built me up, I don't give a fuck what you niggas say. So he's at a point right now where he feels like what he's doing is what he's doing and he's not going to change that at all for nobody until a fallout or something else happens where he has to. He done had a fallout already, though. That's the thing. He fell out with Rory and Maul. Yeah. I think that's when his podcast was at, at his peak. But I wasn't watching it back then because Maul was always like a cornball to me, and I couldn't stand him acting like he was the coolest nigga. Like, I don't know. It's just his energy. I'm like, you're not that guy, bro. Like, cut that shit out. You feel right. me? Now he has Queens Flip, which he don't really fit on there because he's like a skit type nigga. He's like a, a niche type nigga. He's not built for these super serious conversations. But that's right. Flip, he put in work. I remember Flip from Smack DVDs. He used to be around Stack Bundles and them niggas. Like, he used to be around all the niggas. Like, who them niggas? He was around, but he was always the jokey, skinny Funny. type nigga, even around them niggas. Like, oh, that's Skip, man. He just played too fucking much. So he really don't fit here. And Melissa Ford, this is like, man, this is the problem with bringing women into male spaces because now you got to adjust to a female oh, being there. Yeah. That itch. It should go at her a little bit. But other than that, it's like trying to make sure she's comfortable. Oh, we can't talk about certain things. Whenever it's a topic about a woman, oh, hands off. It should have to be the one to say it or Queen's Flip. But Joe won't say nothing to keep her comfortable. So I'd be kind of iffy with having these female co-hosts anyway in the male-dominated spaces because now you can't be a man like you could be with your boys at the barbershop. Yeah, we gotta walk on. We gotta walk on thin ice now, at a place that we've been, you know, talking how we wanted to talk and talking freely for five, six years. Now you come in, and you know, and and and, and I don't think, and I, I think she's an okay addition to the show. Besides eye candy, she's not providing us with anything at all. Uh, they just did a they just did a word counter. He had a word counter on the last couple of shows, and I think in a in a, an hour she said like five words. It's like you you're not even giving us takes. And also, if you look at her before she got on the show, when she just came to just sit down, she was a way different person. And this this is what happens with girls, I think, is when they when they just pull up for the pull up, they energetic, they fun, they're giving the whole stories, they're doing everything. So Joe and them thought that's what she was going to be on the show. But now she got to see y'all every day. So now she's trying to play like none of that shit ever existed. She's down to earth, she's humble, she's modest, all this shit, which, at, which I understand. But at the same time, the shit that she was doing on the show, uh, prior to be, being on the show is what they thought she was going to get. And that's what people were coming to see from her. When they actually got her on the show, she's very, she's too guarded and, and worried about what people are going to think of her way too much. So a lot of times she don't even answer the question. She go in a circle for five, six minutes without even answering the actual question because she's afraid of what we're going to think. And she's also afraid of the backlash that she's going to get from the guys on a, on a, um, on a panel. So I think if they want to keep her, they got to bring another girl. Or they gotta really grill her off the scenes and be like, you gotta come, you gotta come with some shit to say. See, me, I'm not a fan of this new style of potting. I like podcasts, they get right into it, they got topics. I'm gonna learn something, you feel me? Or it's a topic I'm interested in, and the the people that's on there, I wanna hear their take. Like this new style, people just get on, mainly the celebrities, like you said, it's an hour intro. We just talking about random shit. Nobody has no idea what you're talking about. There's no context. There's no flow. There's no direction. It's like we really just talking and taking up time for ad space because that's all it is. They get paid off these ad rolls. So the longer the pot, you feel me, the more ads we can get, the more revenue we can get, and the yeah. more we can break the clips down. But at least when Joe Rogan does it, they're talking about interesting shit. Hey, man, what you think about aliens? And Hey, man, you ever done DMT? And so even though they might not have no direction and it's random, it's interesting shit. Like, Man, you ever seen a grizzly? Yeah, man, this grizzly. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Joe Rogan to have you like, man, I ain't never even thought of that. Let me go look up yeah. the grizzlies now. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's at least some funny shit. But with the with, with niggas, it's just kicking back. Oh, yeah, man. And like, what like what y'all talk about, gang? Like, I don't know. Because they be asking us to do that. Like, man, y'all should chill on the topics and just come in and just sit back. I'm like, that's not my personality. I can do it, but that's more like a Twitch type thing. When I'm on set, I like to have direction i like to have topics i like to have substance a lot of people don't want substance they just want to see you which even is kind ash, of even the ash shit. joe buddy used to say he would never do that now he got prize picks and all these other things like he had ruby rose on i believe because um she has a thing a thing with prize picks so it's like he's starting to do a lot of shit like that that's just tanking the content in my opinion um 
you got seven people on the show. It's a lot of voices, uh, a lot of different opinions, and and, and and so and some of them aren't formulated well. And I think that's what he needs to do. He needs to hone in on the content and figure it out. I I I, I honestly suggest. He, it's called the Joe Budden Network anyway. He got a, another podcast with uh, some football players as well. I think he should oh, yeah. he should keep whoever's on the show, but give them segments of their own. Because like he had improper uh, improv <laughs> with Flip. He could do a show with Mel on her own. Like it's some things that he could do, but I don't know if the people want to that are there want to do it. See the thing about Rory and Maul was them niggas was there through thick and thin. He said, "Come here today. We do it." Was, you never watched the episode. It was like, oh, this nigga's on vacation today. Like he, he's over here. Like it was never none of that. They was every episode. Joe was there. They was there. Now niggas is more. It's two sedity niggas is on vacations. Niggas is like, oh, I'm, I don't want to talk about this shit. Whatever. And so it's taking the content. He doesn't have a, in my opinion, a group of people who really want to see the show grow. They came after the growth, so they didn't get paid. They fuck with it, but they never gonna fuck with it as much as him because they didn't. They didn't watch it grow. They just ride the wave. You feel? See, that's why I feel what Shannon Sharp said. A lot of people, oh my God, I can't believe you said that. He like, look, you work for me, ain't no vacation if I ain't on vacation. Because what you do on vacation, and I'm the star, and I'm at work. What you mean you on vacation? <laughs> Fuck you mean? Without me, it's no you. So how is you on vacation and I'm working? I feel that because yeah. this beats a nine to five. So if you're not trying to push the content further and push the brand further than me, or at least as further uh, as far as me. I don't need you around because what the fuck are you around for? You are y'all playing? See, you I, think, I think you got to start bringing more guests on as well. It's cool with them, but they're not captivating personalities to me, in my opinion. It was cool when you used to bring the battle rappers and shit on. They used to live in the show up. You get a lot more arguments and debates and back and forth. And all these niggas is like, oh, man, everybody's a cool old laid back nigga. And then you got Melissa Ford who act like she never was a video vixen. Like, oh, I don't want to hear that shit, man. Uh, shout out to uh, Sue Surf because that's really who was supposed to be on the show yep. before he got locked up, and he was killing it like that. He was a funny ass motherfucker. He had great insight on topics. He brought that realness to the show that you know I feel like the cast right now is kind of missing and that rawness. And so shout out to him because he really was killing it, but he got locked up. I, I, from what I'm hearing though on the show, he he gonna come back once he's free. So hopefully he do, and and you know mm -hmm. it it go crazy. Yeah, free suit surf, man. We got to get him on the show when he touched down, man. Y'all at the wave, you feel me? Funny, I was supposed to do a song with that nigga back in like 2011. Uh -huh. Oh, God, and I ain't even rap like on oh, Jesus. The bar up. <laughs> nigga, what? Oh, I was a super fan of battle rap. I'm like, man, let me let me DM this nigga. DM that nigga on fucking uh, Twitter. Like, hey, man, how much for a verse? The nigga tapped in immediately because he was coming to LA. Like, yeah, boo woo. But since you know, you, you, you were homie, woo woo, get bam, I'll charge you this. So he a real dude. He a real cat. He real down to earth and shit. Shout out to Surf, free the wave. But yeah, you got anything else, man? I'm, you feel me? I finish this little workout, man. No, nah, man, that's it. That's it. What that, what that footage looking like? It's looking superb. Yeah, I already I already got the uh, one that's uploaded to the drive. The first one we just uh, we was doing this, so I'll share I'll share it to you right now, and then I'm gonna do the next one. The next one's only like an hour and like five minutes, so it should be. That's cool. cool. That's how I like to keep it. You feel me? Yeah. I think that two hours should be, unless it's like a crazy guest, that should be overkill sometimes. We could have went with old boy though. When y'all see that, y'all gonna y'all gonna fuck with that one. We could have went with him for for a minute. For sure. Yeah, y'all know we should have cut all that bullshit with ruckus out. Just you feel me? Cause I, I just went like damn this nigga's tapped in, tapped in. He yeah. he got all type of motherfuckers uh, on his page. And they know this nigga. So it's like it was no cap in his rap. Hey, facts. And you and I think you know that's something else too, uh, that I wanted to bring up about followers compared to in real life, right? Like you go to somebody's page and they might not have nothing, like it ain't that crazy, but nigga know every like know more people than somebody with a hundred thousand followers know or has more connections oh, able to make more movies, right? So How you get outside? Fucking dog. Yeah, that, that's that's cool, dude. That's right, though, because you'll have somebody who just take pictures with a lot of celebrities as they meet them, but they don't even know these fucking people. But if you go down their page, you're like, oh, this person is lit. I seen them with Snoop. I seen them with Dre. I seen them with... Really, you just a fan who follows celebrities around. You feel me? So perception is reality, though. Facts. But yeah, I'm in the live. Y'all share, like, subscribe to the channel. Run us up. New episode will be out soon. We got a real exclusive interview coming out with a heavy hitter in the industry that a lot of y'all probably don't know about, but y'all finna learn about. So y'all stay tuned. You feel me? The content is only going to keep going up. We're going to keep raising the bar. You feel me? We're going to keep blazing a, a, a path 
We're gonna keep blazing the trail for others to follow. The viral way. Get out of here.